Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll free number 800 951 0592. The website at allamericangold.com. And it, it's a short week. It's, it's Tuesday. Obviously, we were off yesterday uh, for Memorial Day. It's always great uh, to have a reminder that. Freedom isn't free. There is a price uh, that is paid for freedom uh, and, and honoring those uh, that paid the ultimate price. Is, it, it's a great thing. Uh, and I want to salute uh, all of the families uh, who've made that sacrifice to allow us to be here today. And, and what a morning already. Uh, it just, again, I thought maybe we could get lucky. And we could have a cooling uh, of energy prices. Uh, that is gone. Uh, matter of fact, get ready for gas prices uh, to go even higher. Of course, I told you that anyway. But I just thought it was going to be uh, July and August. Uh, gold, or I mean, I'm sorry, oil is up uh, pretty substantially today. Unleaded gas up really big today uh, a new uh, high uh, unleaded gas futures uh, now well over $4 uh, 415 and rising on uh, Russian ban this is going to be cargo ships to Europe cargo ships to Europe uh, being banned uh, any oil coming through the pipeline still can go through but that's roughly uh, about two-thirds of the Russian oil to Europe uh, is going to be banned, Jason. That's just going to put even more pressure on an already tight oil market. Uh, we've got uh, NYMEX crude approaching $120 a barrel. Uh, and, and then, of course, uh, Brent crude uh, almost $125 a barrel. Yeah, there's not much about the news cycle that uh, speaks to uh Oil prices going down, Joe. <laughs> Everything seems to be, well, there's some more bad news, and this probably means things are more expensive and your gas is going to get more expensive. I, uh, every day, Joe, you've got something that we uh, talk about that's uh, Inflation is out of control. They're way behind. You know, Joe Biden's going to have Jay Powell at the White House. Everybody get excited. Of course, he's already said, oh, I'm not going to you know, mess with their independence. Listen, the central bank needs to go away. They caused this. They've always caused it. Then they lie about it. And, and we let them lie. Why? Because they've bought off everybody that really matters. The, we have elected officials that kowtow to bankers. Right? It's the same thing. Coronavirus. Kowtow. Listen, every, you big farmer. It's bankers. Give up our freedoms for bankers. Make us absolutely 100% enslaved to the bankers. That, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. You know, you sit there and you, you hear about all, all these people. have got me, uh, medical bills drove me into bankruptcy. Why did medical bills cost so much? Bankers, don't you get it? Doesn't, don't people understand? Listen, we let them go on. Literally, this is a 50-year bender they've been on. The total national debt in 1971 was $400 billion. $400 billion. That's it. And over half of that, over half of that, had been left over from World War II. You know, most people don't know because they've dumbed us down. You know that we ran just as many budget surpluses as budget deficits from when World War II ended until 1971? Yeah, we were fiscally responsible. Well, at least trying to be. Now, now look at us. And they sit there and, and try to tell us that they have this under control. It's not under control. Wall Street trying to pretend that somehow they've got control here. The dollar's up today. Why? Well, because high gas prices and high oil prices, that's bad for Europe. No, that's bad for us. That's really bad for us. Uh, we've been talking all about 
the jobs market, housing. Today, Case Schiller, uh, this is, I think this is the peak for the housing prices, Jason. It hit an all time record. You think about, uh, what, remember the old housing bubble in how fast, you know, these housing prices went up? And, and Case Schiller today said, hey, now granted, I want to say this was a March number, uh, but prices for homes soared by a record 20%. It, that's just insane. Uh, they're saying that the March data from the top 20 cities surged 2.42% month over month. Uh, and, of course, if you annualize that, that would be like 29%, Jason. Yeah, and it's a bad situation for the average American trying to either buy their first home or try to maneuver through the uh, the housing market because, Joe, I've said it many times, uh, if housing prices were to, let's just say 2023, the rest of this year, 2022, let's just say housing prices go down 5%, which is the average homeowner, oh, that's no big deal. I can I can handle that. But if, if inflation is still 20% or even more, your house is not keeping up. That means that's a housing price crash. So even any, any price is going down, Joe, if we... If you're right and we hit the uh, we've hit the top, well, let's just say it just scales back five percent over the next year. That's bad with inflation. That's real bad. I mean, the one the one asset the most Americans actually claim to to keep them safe, right, Joe? Not keeping up. Not keeping up. And, and again, this was a March number. So all this data out. How did we get these huge jumps in inventory? Right, all that stuff. Well, that's how prices got so expensive. Nobody can afford one. Hector Radio News Hour. We're going to talk about uh, Joe Biden, Jay Powell, and the job market when we return. 800 951 Joe and Jason here. Just just some things. So Case Schiller, now this was a March number, saying that at no point in history had home prices risen so much in a single month. Now, a lot of it having to do with the lower end market oh, it's already starting to suffer from the higher interest rates and only expensive homes uh, were being sold out there. But I want to point a few things out. Savings rates crashing the most since Lehman Brothers. Remember, up until last week, the stock market had the worst eight weeks since 1932 are you not listening are you not ready and i know but you're like wait but but double the dow still 32,000 and you know gold's only 1840 1850 it's you know we don't know yes you do this is the denial phase right and and we've seen uh this denial phase before remember when they they denied inflation it's just transitory. And then, we, of course, it wasn't. Remember last week? You know why they, the Dow rallied last week? Because someone decided that maybe we've hit peak inflation or, or the Fed's going to take a pause. There's no pause here. People have no idea how bad these numbers truly are. Did you see the price of it? By the way, all-time record high prices for beef, all-time record high prices for chicken, pork, right? Do you remember the old substitution? Well, if the beef is too expensive, they'll just buy the chicken. Well, guess what? They're both too expensive. The eggs are too expensive. Heck, you can't even buy dog food anymore and have it be cheaper. Yep, all those people that, oh, I can live on dog and cat food. Well, even that's too expensive, Jason. Yeah, Joe. It's, it, you know, it's, I, I, I listen to our own show sometimes, Joe. When I hear you talking, we're, we're, we're going back and forth. And you just, you know, I think it's natural to think, well, it's going to get better sometimes. Well, it's, you know, at, at some point, it, it'll all be okay, right? But it sure seems like uh, <laughs> there's not a break. And uh, the expense of things uh, just getting worse and worse. I, you know, it, it was a little higher end, but I, I, I was looking at patio furniture uh, yesterday, and uh, I saw, saw like a uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh because I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, my wife we was going; she's uh, going to get new cushions. Yes, for our patio furniture. <laughs> 
It's not, not cheap. Oh, my Lord <laughs> in heaven. Just the cushions of fortune. Yes. Yeah, we saw one of the higher-end cushions we saw was $57. <laughs> We saw uh, we saw these little these rocking chairs. They're a little, high, little higher quality. You know, I know there's cheap ones out there, but uh, eight hundred dollars for a really high quality, you know, sturdy. It's gonna last. You know, it has a warranty on it. And then the lower end ones, Joe, are still like two, three hundred dollars just for a, a chair to sit on on your front porch. <laughs> yeah, and 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 it, it's so ridiculous. It, it really, really. And Jay says, right, you can buy cheap stuff, but like here in Arizona, everyone knows the sun kills everything. So you you got patio furniture, and you want it to last more than a season or two. You got to buy high quality stuff. Joe, I bought a uh, rocking chair. I bought, I bought a rocking chair for that front patio last year. I think it was like two hundred bucks. And I, and I do a lot of rocking. You know, I I, I use it, and uh, it, the thing broke a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I was like, well, you got to, you know, if you want something that actually is 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 decent, it's going to last. You you're going to have to spend a lot of money, Joe. You can't two hundred dollars is like you said, that's one year for a, a glide, yeah. you know, a little glider rocker chair. The problem is the two hundred dollar item used to be seventy nine dollars two years ago. It's now two hundred. Yes, that's the problem. How about this too? Just one other thing, and, and then I'm going to switch gears here. So the K Schiller March. Now, last week, I told you about housing. Jason's talking about a 5% correction. Uh, it's going to be way worse than that. Just telling you. Home sellers now are lowering their prices at the highest level in years. Uh, nearly one in five sellers dropped price uh, in the last four weeks, ending May the 22nd. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give you a little foreshadowing. That number is going to be five out of five uh, by the end of the summer. Everybody is going to have to be uh, lowering those prices because interest rates are going to the moon. There's no stop here. There's no pause. There's only one way this thing ends, and that's a complete obliteration, total and complete demand destruction, and, and that's the only way you fix these things. And uh, I love Stephen Roach. I know. I know. And I just drew a blank. Isn't that hilarious? Who's the Paul Vol I know Paul Volcker. And Jay Powell is no Paul Volcker. This is the problem. We've got, in, no, no offense, but we've got a weak central bank president. And we've got maybe the weakest president ever right now. At the time when strength is going to be needed, Jason, this is going to be, I, I hate to say it, but it, this is going to be an absolute disaster. And, and, and the denial, they want to deny, 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 deny. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, this is going to be very, very sudden. And really not, because let's face it, we've been talking about inflation for a year and a half, at least that long. And I've been warning you and warning you. How many months ago was it? Six? Was it six months ago? When I was telling you, wait till the summer happens. Wait till you see gas with a five. Listen, this was gas. Gas was like $3 when I was telling you this. And it's not stopping at five. And I know Colorado, your gas starts with a four. It's going to start with a five. Don't worry. Don't worry. California... Yeah, seven, eight. Remember we talked about natural. By the way, natural gas keeps skyrocketing. One of the big reasons, the lack of water here in the West, uh, a lot of our energy now, uh, they're replacing the hydro with natural gas, which is just making things even worse. I mean, you got natural gas, triple the price. Uh, these things are just completely unabating out there. And Jason, it's this perfect storm, and I keep trying to tell everybody, listen, we're going into, as Jason likes to call it, the Double Great Depression, which is a depression. We're, it's coming. See, the, the difference is, and why we say, why is it a double versus a regular? Well, remember the Great Recession? Because they didn't want to call it a depression. The Great Recession with the financial crisis. I know you don't want to remember. And I know you don't want to remember 
uh, you know, Bear Stearns coming on CNBC when their stock was $42 and telling you how great their balance sheet was. And literally two weeks later, there was an emergency Federal Reserve meeting over the weekend to hand Bear Stearns to J.P. Morgan for $2. Right, but remember the cry, Wall Street won't open without a bailout. There's no more bailouts. It's bail-ins now. Why do you think, Lael Bernard, I want to, re- you know what, we did this on Friday. Maybe people weren't paying attention. And I want to remind you exactly why your money is so at risk. Lael Brannard was out. Right now, she's the number two at the Fed. She's going to be Jay Powell's replacement. Jay Powell is going to get the blame. Lael Brannard is going to take over. They're going to give us a digital currency. And I want to tell you what she said about it. She said that the central bank digital currency could, could coexist and be a be complementary to stable coins and commercial bank money. Now, she left out one other piece of money. So think about what she just said. It could complement stable coin. Now, when she says stable coin, I've got a feeling that a couple will live. I think Bitcoin could live. Maybe Ethereum could live. I think all the rest go to nothing. And, and I could be wrong on that. They could all go to nothing. I, I don't know. But I think, Jason... That somehow the the stable coin in this commercial bank money, maybe they're going to have a little system where where they the the money flows outside in into those two entities. But there's a there's the big entity she didn't say. She didn't mention anything about your cash, and I'm not talking about your cash under your mattress. She didn't mention. Hey, central bank digital currency can exist with your bank accounts, can exist with your 401ks. They can uh, coexist with your IRAs. She didn't say that because she knows they won't. Because we need that money to bail in. And she said, listen to what she did say. She said it could provide safe central bank liability in a digital financial ecosystem, much like cash currently coexists with commercial bank money. Huh. Kind of interesting that she didn't say cash could coexist, right, Jason? Because it won't. Yeah, and, and you know with the, the digital currencies, I, th- I think they'll be around as long as they're uh, what, what the IRS deemed them in 2014 as uh, equities. If they perform like stocks, you buy them and sell them, and you get taxed on them and pay fees and all that. That's that's going to be allowed to exist. But if, if any of these digital currencies start acting like money, and then people are buying and selling, purchasing things as money, that's where the regulations will come in, and they'll stomp those flat. That, that's what I think, Joe. As long as, as long as yeah, it acts I, like a stock, right? So yeah, that, that's and, and, right. and it's and it's already doing that, right? They're starting to regulate it, and they're going to regulate this thing to death. It's too bad. Uh, but how, how about this over the weekend? MasterCard. They came out because, let's face it, MasterCard's like, mm, they, they, that could be one of the losers in, in all of this. Uh, but they said that as far as uh, they're concerned, the SWIFT payment system. Okay, So this is the system which the United States is using against Russia. This is where countries pay each other. Through SWIFT. So the Russians uh, are selling natural gas to the Germans. The Germans pay for it through the SWIFT system. Of course, uh, we're blocking Russia from that system. They're saying that is in as little as five years, SWIFT will be gone and we'll have the central bank di- uh, digital currency system in place. So we're starting to get new timelines, Jason. This is probably the the biggest, uh, I would say, banking-like institution. They're now saying digital currencies will be here within five years. 
that sounds reasonable, Joe. Actually, yeah. I mean, uh, the economic chaos that we're, we're we're heading into and that we've been kind of in, you know, there just seems like there's these little pauses. That he has, you know, it's almost like a slow crash that we're having. You know, things are moving really slowly, and uh, as we said before, it starts slowly and then all at once. And that's that's a good timeline because they, they they're going to yeah. offer this up as a solution, as as a as a a, a reprieve. A hey, this is going to fix it. I know you've been you've been suffering for one year, two years, three years. This is the way out. That's that's how they're going to present it, Joe. And you got to remember, that's the SWIFT system they talked about. I think we'll get it sooner. But it'll take a while, right, to get all of these things in place. But to Jason's point, this is the solution. So I don't think we get into the heart of this, right? We're already seeing the slowdown. Everybody knows it. But the the suddenly part, it is going to be fast, it is going to be significant, and it is going to be extremely painful as you watch the, the bubble wealth you thought you had get eviscerated, because that's the solution. Patriot Radio News Hour. Big, big things broke over the weekend about the jobs market. I've been warning about that. We'll talk about that next. 800-951-0592, Patriot Radio News Hour. And uh, I'm going to give you another number. And I know. It's what I do. I love numbers. The records that are being shattered, and we see it uh, everywhere. Like Kay Schiller said, hey, March, the largest increase month over month in housing ever. Of course, all the data after that, the largest jumps in housing inventory ever. Wall Street, up until last week, the worst eight weeks going back to 1932. Inflation, right? The highest, in, and they keep saying the highest in 40 years, but we know that's just a, that's fake. Because they just changed how they calculated the numbers. If they left the numbers the way they were in the 70s and the 80s, inflation would be the highest on record ever. Ever. Well, guess what? I've got another all-time record number. This one happens to be related to your jobs numbers. This is also tracked actually in real time. See, it's so easy. We have computers. I don't know why we have to wait for all this data. We can track everything in real time. But again, if you did that, then you can't massage the numbers. The measure of total job postings. Okay, so this is, think about this, real time job postings. Plunged by 22.5%, the largest change on record. Jason, this is a pattern. When they sit there and I tell you, well, it's gradual till it's suddenly, the only reason why it's gradual is they don't want you to know these numbers. They want to pretend, well, if we can just string it along, maybe it'll get a little bit little bit better. Here's the reality. When, when they finally figure out, oh, crap, we got to keep raising rates, even though we're, 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 we're starting to fall into recession. Rates still got to keep going higher. Everything's out of control. This is why then you have these massive drops, because as Jason and I keep trying to tell you, listen, we're trying to lift up the covers so you can see what you're what you're laying in. They want to keep the covers on so they can have you pretend that you're laying in. Oh, everything's great. Don't worry. It's going to be temporary. Jay Powell's going to fix it, and and everything's going to go back to normal. And then you, when you pull back the covers, you realize you've been uh, lying in a big pile of, of of you know. I won't say it, but you know what I'm talking about. The largest drop in job postings ever, Jason. Yeah, there's a lot of factors going against that, not just the markets, Joe. And I mean, there's there's so many factors. Uh, and, and you just look at the biggest companies like Amazon, Walmart, whatever, and uh, how they're they're mechanizing their workforce. You know, they, they just don't need people anymore. I think we were covering it last week, Joe. You're talking about how, or maybe it's just when you and I were talking about how you you'd see people training themselves out of their jobs. 
you know, and, and those jobs may never come back. And the idea is, well, with modernization, those new jobs will open up, but where are they coming from, Joe? And uh, you, you talk about the you know, standard of living. You, know, you see the, the, you know, the things are slow, you know, slide, sliding slowly until they, suddenly it goes really fast. But look at just every decade, the standard of living just seems to go lower and lower and lower. They've really strung this thing along for decades, really. We faced it yeah, in, the, in the early 60s, Joe. What do you think about the American standard of living in the, in the early 60s before the Vietnam War came rolling through versus now? I mean, you used to have the one husband that would work and uh, the mom would stay home and take care of the kids. And uh, there'd be vacations and retirement and uh, all off that one income. And now, look, you know, if you, you have two parents working, if there is a two-parent home. And uh, one, one of them is usually working two or three jobs just to pay the bills, Joe. Forget yeah, the vacation. We're talking about a million plus layoffs coming. Uh, and again, one of the early signs, job posting. Think about this. In a month. Job postings fell almost 25%. One in four jobs disappeared. This is this is really uh, crazy things uh, when we're starting to see a record jump in housing inventory, record jumps in the decline in job postings, and, and the list just keeps going on. Record high gas prices, beef, chicken, eggs. I mean, you name it, everything's at record high pricing, and then the underbelly is really starting to decay. And here's the why, again, we call it the double. Because guess what the solution won't be, which has been the solution for 50 years. Print more money. Print more money. That can't be the solution this time. Matter of fact, think about this. As we're doing this, as we're seeing these signs, what are Jay Powell and his friends doing right now? They're trying to eliminate money, right? That's what uh, the raising of rates is. And remember, I've been very consistent on this. How long does he raise rates till we're in a Great Depression? The problem is what's supposed to happen after that. We know the Fed's, te it, it's textbook, right, Jason? Bring yep. rates to zero, bring in quantitative easing, skyrocket the national debt and print more money. Uh-uh, not this time. Why? Because inflation is killing us. It's not going away. We need, when I tell you we need complete and utter demand destruction, that's what we're going to have. And by the time the Fed realizes, uh-oh, we needed to print more money and go for the hyper-hyped-up inflation, Jason, I think it's too late. That's exactly right, Joe. That's exactly right. And and I was, uh, I mean, I, I saw this thing over the weekend. You talk about jobs, right? Your job, people need to work, people need uh, income. It just seems like there's, not only is the, is the market bad, but the uh, you know, modernization, hey, Amazon's closing down warehouses because of these recent numbers. I saw this. Amazon's got 30 million too much square feet, 30 yep. million yep. extra square feet that they want to get rid of. Check out what I saw about Walmart next year. Not not not, th not five years or three years. Next year, I used to kid. I used to kid my brother a little bit. He's like, well, you know, they're going to make these driverless trucks. He's a truck driver. They're, they're, they're going to make these driverless trucks, and then they're going to need you. It's like, I don't know when it's coming, but I, I remember I was driving Uber. I tell all my Uber passengers, well, pretty soon you're going to get an Uber, and there's going to be nobody driving the car. You're just going to get in. It's going to take you. And I don't think they've perfected this technology, but I'll tell you one thing. Walmart's doing something to uh, cut costs. They're going to have a million drone deliveries next year. They guaranteed it. Yeah, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell you this, too. Every one of these retailers is talking about we've got way too much inventory. Every, think about it. We've got shortages of stuff. And the stuff that they don't have shortages on, they've got. And I'm not talking, oh, we got 5% too much inventory. No, you're talking 20, 30, 40% too much inventory. How about Elon Musk? I know he's a big popular guy right now. I want to tell you what he says is coming. Get ready for that. 800 592 Patriot Radio News Hour. Uh, gold's down 10 right now at 2145. 
uh, the Dow is down across the board. The NASDAQ, uh, the S&P, uh, the Dow. The one thing up is crude oil. Uh, right now, Brent crude, $123. Uh, NYMEX, 100, almost $118. Unleaded gas futures uh, hit another uh, all-time high today, as well as diesel or heating oil. Uh, futures as well, and, and we've been talking about all the economic data out, and you'll notice Wall Street only rallies when they don't want to talk about economic data, when they want to talk about make-believe, like the Fed can pause, or or the, the rates aren't going too high, inflation has peaked, all that's nonsense. That's why you got to have your gold put away. $20 gold pieces today, twenty-one seventy-five. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Volume discount day today. If you buy 20 or more, 2150 at 800 951 0592. Elon Musk took to Twitter. Says that it would be absolutely beneficial for the United States to go into a recession because we need bankruptcies. He said that the that we're in for a quote rude awakening and that working from home has made Americans lazy. Yes, he was uh, I don't know if you saw that he was uh complimenting how hard the Chinese workers would work compared to the American workers, but set that aside. He essentially is saying that a recession, listen to this too, that that they're talking about a recession. He's talking about a recession, Jason, that lasts a year to a year and a half. And, and I don't know how long it's going to last. And I don't think recession's the right word. Here's what everybody's going to be shocked by, is after it's done, it's going to be a flat line, right? Because the Fed and the money printing can't come to the rescue because inflation's still going to be hot, hot, hot. And so we're going to enter this period very much like, and Jason's brought this up numerous times. You know, we had, you know, the really, I guess 1929 was kind of the top of the roaring 20s. Uh, then we had, uh, you know, the official uh, Great Depression started when they closed the banks in 33. But as Jason has told you, listen, we stayed in a very flat. Matter of fact, a lot of people will argue we were in and out of the Depression well after 33. And, and we did. We, we'd have a couple of years of growth, then a couple of years of no growth. It was a very flat line. And then World War II happened. And then it happened again, right, Jason? Into yep. the, uh, the 50s, into the 60s, another very flat line. And I think this is what we're going to see this time around is the great, you know, double depression. you got to come up with the central bank digital currency to save us. And then probably a decade plus of very little economic growth. Yeah, 1937, it was getting back to being bad again. And uh, that's very uh, timely as when World War II started, essentially. You know, essentially. So uh, it, it, was almost, it was almost like World War II was loaded and ready, Joe. And uh, when America and, and England and, and parts of Europe, they couldn't, they couldn't get out of this thing, then they, uh, they, they, uh, they just uh, went to that emergency. They created well, a war. I, I, I don't like that you brought it up. I wanted to avoid it because I'm watching – this Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan thing. And, and you know how history tends to repeat itself. Are we going to see something like that again? Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like they're, they're putting it together so that when they decide it needs to start, they can just start it. It's, it's, you know, it's almost like these, uh, these financiers, the world powers. Right, we, we think of oh, World War II, we think of the 40s. It already had started in the 30s. Oh, that right? was the 30s, so looked, yeah. That was, that was really a right? 30s war, Joe. The, the 40s was just how they were trying to get out of it and finish it off. 
You know, it just and, took, and took that long to destroy the whole it world. It just basically. took that long, and I'm wondering, are we got the same thing here? Well, it started out with this uh, uh, Russia Ukraine thing, and all of a sudden now it's uh, uh, China, Taiwan, India. You know, this whole thing. I, I don't know. I hope I hope that part doesn't repeat itself, but I think a lot of the rest of it does. Uh, you know, the, the banks are, we're gonna, we're gonna be left with maybe 50 banks, 100 banks max. Uh, all the rest of them are going to become essentially non-essential, uh, a, as we go to a digital currency. Most of your entire life savings for most people is gonna be completely wiped out. Because all of your money, most people, all of their money's in, in, in their bank accounts. Or in their 401k or their stock accounts. It's somewhere in what we'll call the debt markets. And the debt markets, Jason, are what is going to be crushed, uh, in, 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 uh, in this great double depression. It really is a war against the citizenry, Joe. It's, I mean, if you want to call it a world war, it's going to be a world war against citizenry because the powers that be are going to be living comfortably. You know, they just, usually there's an ebb and flow in world history where, the rich get richer, and then it just kind of, you know, they kind of collapse on their own control. They give it back to the people, and, 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 you know, there's some freedom back. Well, this technology and this ability to, you know, to decide, you know, with social credit scores and digital of everything, Joe, you can decide who gets to have food, who doesn't on a local area, or even, hey, which country is playing ball, which country is not playing ball, right, Joe? Yeah, this tech, this, you know, the new technology so much power more powerful than the old technology thanks radio news hour final segment coming up 800-951-0592 golds down 8 1847 uh silver at 2175 uh the dow the nasdaq the s&p are all uh lower as well and i know some people are oh you know double you're too negative Really? Or am I just too factual? I mean, think about this. They say we only got 10 weeks of wheat in the entire world. Uh, Japan's largest steel makers, these are all things I haven't even told you about, said more price hikes are coming, right? Just when they, you know, oh, inflation's cooling and cars and this. Yeah, cars are not getting cheaper. Sorry. I wish they were. Uh, uh, what else? Parts for semis, for the freight liners, uh, starting to be stolen. People are stealing computer chips out of trucks because they can't fix other trucks, right? I mean, all these things that you're that we don't talk about. How about the Czech Republic over the weekend? Hey, by the way, uh, we're going to increase our gold holdings by ten times, by over a thousand percent right in the litany of central banks lining up their gold assets there's a reason i can tell you right now and the answer is you know what this do digital currency that gives people even more power everybody wants to have jason that alternative uh to to fiat money and digital money yeah and when people buy gold joe they, they like to compare it to other things which i don't like to compare it to other things they see Cryptocurrency is going up 50% over a year, or they see a stock go up 100% over a year, and they, they see all these fantastic investments that they, oh, I wish I would have jumped on that. And then they just see gold kind of moving slowly, slowly down and slowly up, and it moves up. And then but here's, here's the thing that's because generally that's how things are supposed to move. And, uh, you know, if we didn't have this, did, this uh, debt money system, if we didn't have the Federal Reserve, gold would be $20 for an ounce. And you would just use it as money. But here we are on the air, Joe. We sell it because now we have to sell you the protection that we used to just have. Right. We took, we just took, uh, you know, we just Americans just took it for uh, for granted, right? One through nineteen, twenty one seventy five, twenty or more, two thousand one hundred and fifty. Uh, we had a default by Sri Lanka, right? We're banning Russia. Russia's now in back in this grace period. Uh, we're banning them from making payments this morning. Pakistan says that they are asking to be bailed out 
by the IMF once again as inflation. And we're going to see this happening all over the, the I think, Jason, most of the quote-unquote third world nations are going to go bankrupt in this cycle. Can you imagine how, uh, I mean, not accepting payments? You think how crazy that is? Think, think about if you're, you go to make your mortgage payment, and the mortgage company is like, well, you got quite a bit of equity there. We're just going to refuse your mortgage payment, and we're going to take that, that asset. Can you imagine how, how, how angry people would be, Joe, when you're actually trying to make the payment and they won't allow it? How, how, no, how destructive you, that your is? ESG, your ESG score isn't good enough. Your vaccinations aren't up to date. Uh, we're just going to deny you that ability, right? Uh, Russia, we don't like the fact that uh, you invaded Ukraine. I'm not even going to get into who violated peace treaties and all that other nonsense. Uh, this is don't make make no mistake about it. This is a banker war once again. Patriot Radio News Hour. 